Havana Cigar Club, located in Warwick, Rhode Island, is a great place to enjoy a drink and a cigar. Stogie Geeks listeners can find a $5 off coupon on our website by clicking the HCC logo. M. Bombay Cigars represent the most admired cigar culture of Cuba. They select the best of the best quality tobacco to use in the aging process. M. Bombay Cigars are then rolled in Costa Rica by some of the most experienced cigar rollers, giving it a unique smoking experience. The band portrays the detailed and artistic nature of our small industry. Try the M. Bombay Casera, M. Bombay Mora, and the recently released M. Bombay Habano. M. Bombay Cigars, where the cigar is a way of life. A.J. Fernandez Cigars, makers of the San Latano, one of the most talked about cigars in recent years, is now offering a groundbreaking line extension, the San Latano Bull. The San Latano Bull features an extensively aged and hearty core of Nicaraguan long fillers nestled beneath an attractive Ecuadorian Sumatra wrapper. Housed in a cedar sleeve which depicts the outline of a bull, only solidifies this cigar as a full-flavored cigar. Removing the sleeve reveals a box-pressed cigar with a beautiful, oily, and smooth chocolate brown wrapper. The San Latano Bull burns nice and neat as it issues columns of smoke hitting you with a wall of spice, followed by leather and cedar. This densely packed cigar intensifies in deep, rich flavors and becomes a flavor bomb halfway through, only getting better with each passing draw. Strong yet smooth and perfectly balanced, A.J. Fernandez, who many have called a tobacco prodigy, has somehow pushed the already spectacular San Latino line of cigars forward with the bull. A.J. Fernandez challenges you to take on the bull. Cigar Snob's number eight cigar of the year for 2014. Duran Premium Cigars, one of the fastest growing boutique cigar companies, providing smokers a portal into the old Cuban tradition of perfect balance and the lost art of progressive flavor construction. Roberto Palayo Duran began his career in tobacco over two decades ago in Havana, where his reputation grew within Cuban circles. The creation of Duran Premium Cigars has given Roberto the platform to introduce a series of cigars that offer the same quality, construction, and detail which he perfected while in Cuba. Brands include the Ultra Premium Roberto P. Duran Premium Cigar Series, Azan Cigars, Naya, and Baracoa. Duran Cigars uses a seed to humidor approach as all tobacco is grown on their farms and rolled in their factory in Esteli, Nicaragua. Rollers have been carefully chosen to carry out Roberto's precise method to ensure the progressive flavor in each cigar. Duran Cigars invites you to make their premium your standard. Welcome back, everyone, to the Stogie Geek Show. I want to remind everyone to check us out on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash Stogie Geeks, or you can go to stogiegeeks.com and click the little Facebook icon. Uh, we post a lot of content. All of our content um, ends up on Facebook. Um, recently, we started doing this thing where we reach back into the Stogie Geeks archive and make a Facebook post uh, about some of the videos that we've done several years ago. The most recent one that I've posted, which no coincidence will, of course, is getting a lot of uh, likes and a lot of attention on Facebook, is an interview with Ariel Ditkowicz. Did I say that right? Yep. I think I said that right. Uh, of La Serena Cigars. It was one of the first interviews that we did here in the new studios, in G-Unit Studios. Um, so there's a, a link to our website. We can watch that uh, that video and... Of course, it's it's pretty obvious why that's getting a lot of attention on, on Facebook as I, I used one of her promotional images. And, um, well, let's just say she's a lot better looking than Will or I. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah, I don't know how I was in Rhode Island that day. Yeah, is she a super nice person, great cigars. Uh, yeah, it was, really. A lot of people have been commenting about how they, they, they like the cigars to this day. So. Yeah, uh, she's done good. a good job. Yep. So make sure you check us out, facebook.com forward slash Stogie Geeks. Any other announcements you had, Will? Yeah, we have a few events coming up. Um, Roberto Palayo Duran, um, actually tonight, is at the Bluegrass Cigar Suite in Cincinnati. Um, if you're not there, definitely go check that out. But tomorrow he'll be at Jungle Gyms in uh, Eastgate, uh, which is in the Cincinnati area. Um, also going on tomorrow night, June 6th, and this is an interesting event. It's called Duran Cigars versus Maya Silva Cigars. And it's being held at the Cigar Cellar and Lounge in Coral Gables, Florida. It's a two-vendor event. They're going to have Jack Tarano from Duran Cigars in one corner and our friend Gabriel Alvarez from Maya Silver in the other corner. And they're actually doing a joint event. 
which I haven't really seen something like that happen. That's pretty you know, cool. Other than the Herps, yeah. And I know we have Gabriel coming on next month, again, to talk nice. to Maya Silver. That's great. Um, the Road Warrior, Raphael Nodal. I'm going to call him the Road Warrior mm-hmm. now. Um, he's, actually not, he's actually doing an event in his backyard. Uh, he's doing uh, Sabor Habana's Smoke This event. It is one of Miami's biggest cigar events. It's being held at Sabor Habana in Doral, Florida. So uh, Raphael uh, will be there. Uh, with his aging room portfolio. And then one last reminder, the uh, M. Bombay Cigar Aficionado giveaway is still open for the trip to New York. Um, The contest ends a week from today. So buy three M. Bombay cigars, you get a raffle ticket uh, for a chance to win. The Las Vegas one, I think, has already expired. Cool. What have you been smoking, Will? Um... You know, I actually went back. You know, I actually, right before I went up to Rhode Island, I was in I was in Raleigh, and um, I ran into my local Fuente rep. In, you know, Charlotte's three hours from Raleigh, but I happened to be up there. Um, and I think I've talked. Fuente's not is one of those brands. It's it's not an easy brand to find in the Charlotte area. Um, there's very few shops that have. I would say you know more the the geeky Fuentes. Um, and I'm gonna put Casa Cuba in that category as a as a geeky uh, fuente. Um, they're just more limited, you know, in terms of how they're distributed. But I did get a chance uh, to pick up a couple of them, and I smoked the Doble Cuatro, um, which is the four and a half by fifty four robusto size. Um, Casa Cuba is a uh, Dominican blend with an Ecuadorian Habana wrapper. Um, Casa Cuba, I think, is one of those cigars, Paul. You either like it or you don't. Mm. I, I don't think that, and and when I like it, I'm not saying it has to be an Oasis rating, but I mean, you're either gonna like it or you, you're not. It's a very unique <clears throat> cigar, in my opinion. Um, it's got a very, it's got this tangy note to it, Paul. That I don't want to say it's fire. I, I know it's not fire cured, but it's kind of reminiscent, I think, of what the fire cured blend sometimes strive to do. And, and this this cigar it brings a very tangy note to it uh, along the way. Um, it's a medium to medium full cigar. Um, I kind of enjoyed it. I, I actually enjoyed it in that short robusto size. I think that size kind of um, was just kind of right up my alley with this one. It's ten dollar cigar. It's not a cheap cigar. Um, I put it as a fiver right now. I think that's about where where it's, and we've talked about fiver being a, a rating means we like and buy it. I, I kind of like this cigar. Yeah, no, I agree. I like your uh, description using the term tangy, um, it's, it's but a it's a tang- very enjoyable kind of tangy. Yeah, and it's it's very unfuente like. Is the mm. and I think that's where it's been a polarizing cigar to some extent. Yep, I agree. I smoked the PDR 1878 Kappa Madura. This is a Brazilian Maduro wrapper with uh, Dominican Criollo 98 binder and uh, Nicaraguan and Dominican Criollo filler. Uh, very good cigar, very smooth um, and really nice flavors. I would give it a fiver. I, and it's a, I think it's a very easy cigar to smoke. Um, the smoothness that they get out of all these tobaccos that they put in it uh, is very, very notable. There's not a lot of spice on it at all, so it's a very smooth cigar. So if you're you're into that kind of thing and you like a nice, smooth Maduro like that, which, I mean, who doesn't, uh, this is a great cigar to reach for. This is one of these cigars, um, I'll say, you know, we talk about size, man. This smokes better in a smaller size. Yeah, this was uh, the Robusto. So it's kind of a big Robusto, but it was a Robusto size. Yeah, I think the. I mean, I think in those robusto, the smaller ring gauges, that cigar is performed, and it's a, it's an affordable cigar. It's not very, um, and that's really the one that kind of put Pinar del Rio on the map was that cigar. Uh, the other thing is they just, I think, I know you'll have it in your story feed. They actually just kind of swapped the bands recently on those. They have more of a glossy look. They kind of look a little more elegant right now. I like. Uh, they, the the other bands were more. The, the other bands were a little more of a paper type band uh, with. But this is more of a glossy band. I really like what they did with this. Excellent. Back to you, Will. Um, I finally have smoked the Nat Sherman 85th anniversary. And this is, I guess you could say it's a follow-up to the Joel Sherman 75th. 
It's a yeah, different cigar. Di- totally different cigar, yep. Oh, yeah, totally different cigar. I mean, but it's a it, where it's common is it's their limited. Um, right. Joel Sher- and it's supposedly a one and done limited, like Joel Sherman was. Mm-hmm. Um, this has got a Dominican wrapper over Nicaraguan binder and filler. It's a six and a half by fifty four Toro, being made at the Casada Cigars Factory. Um. This cigar, it's got some good notes. It's got some notes of cocoa and earth. It's got a, um, some cedar notes in it. Um, it's Towards the end, it's going to get more earthy and cedary, and it's going to be a little more cocoa-ish up at the front. Um, you're definitely getting some of those Nicaraguan tobaccos with the, with the, there's some pepper spice on there as well. Um, it's, you know, the interesting thing is that this cigar is ultimately going to be compared against the Joel Sherman. Yeah. Which is, an, it, you know... It's, tough, it, that, it's tough to compare to that cigar. Yeah, it's tough to compare. Even though it's a completely different cigar, it's, mm-hmm. this is a this is um, a little more fuller. It's, 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 it's in the medium range I had it. Yep. Um, it performs well. It's a cigar I thought that was more enjoyable at the beginning than at the end. Um, it's a pricey cigar. It, it's $19. And it's a good cigar, but I can't go higher than a fiver on this one. Yeah, I, I would agree. And I, I thought age was going to be really uh, kind to that cigar, and I haven't smoked it since it first came out. So, Yeah, I'm going to go back and, and re- I had because like this was my first time I've had it. Um, I had heard some very disappointing reports on this cigar. It, it was not a bust, this cigar, by any means. It was a, like I said, no, it was a, a good cigar. cigar. Yeah. Again, a fiber is a good cigar, but if there's, a, if there's Joel Sherman sitting there, and 85th sitting there. I'm going Joel Sherman all the way. Yep. I agree. I agree. Yep. I'm curious to see what that cigar does, uh, the 85th does, with a little more age on it. Yeah, I am. Um, yeah, I'm very curious, too. It may mellow. I mean, it's a medium. It may mellow a little more. It may bring out a little more flavor when that happens. Yeah, because it is kind of bold. <clears throat> I think some of those Nicaraguan tobac- tobaccos definitely make it a lot more bold. Yeah, and I can see how people said that this cigar was probably young because, um, again, it's, there's some spice on this cigar. Mm. I smoked uh, uh, from something from the, the Byron by Selected Tobacco. Uh, yeah, I made a little edit on this, by the did. way. And I'll talk- yeah, so this is a Byron Siglo 21 Distinguido? Yeah. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. Um, this was a great cigar. I mean, it's, it, it smokes, um, it's in like the same category as the Cuban cigar in terms of, uh, the strength and the body and kind of like how it smokes. You know what I mean? It's not yep. like overpowering bold. Like Will was just talking about that 85th from Nat Sherman. Um, it, it's in a different category. It's a very mellow smoke. Um, and it's all about those subtle flavors, and it's one you really want to pay attention to when you smoke it. I mean, it carries a <clears throat> thirty plus dollar price tag on it as well, so you really want to take your time and smoke it. And this is uh, the same uh, cigar uh, from the makers of Atabe. Is that correct? That's well, correct. Yeah. So uh, Dave Garofalo was talking about those on our show. Uh, it's just it's a very you know delicate flavors. Um, extremely medium bodied, uh, very smooth, uh, very aromatic, uh, just a really great cigar. I, I gave it a fight Chuck Norris because I thought this was just an amazing cigar. Um, it, it, it smokes in that same kind of categories as those, you know, well-aged Cubans or something that's medium bodied uh, in a non-Cuban that's been aging for a long time. Um, it just has those delicate flavors. Very, very good cigar. Yeah, and the the tweak I made on what you had is um, there's three blends in the Byron. Yes, um, and this blend single, is on this blend is undisclosed. We don't know what the wrapper binder right, filler is. We don't know what any of them are. Um, and I had reviewed the Sigo Twenty, which I also gave a Chuck Norris rating to. Um, but I had not. But when I saw the band on that, I'm like, that's not the same Byron. And that was the Byron Twenty One. And actually, so Barry um, gave that thing a 99. Yeah, I know he's, a, and I know he works with Dave, but I also right. know he really believes in those cigars. Yes, um, and that's a very good cigar. Yeah, and, and all those things that Dave are saying and, and Barry uh, have said about the Byron and Atabay lines, uh, Will and I have backed them up. Yeah, we back <laughs> it up, and they gifted us a, a bunch of them. This one I actually bought in Dave's store when I visited, 
And um, uh, it, uh, they're they're right, dude. I mean, you, uh, Will and I are not disputing anything they say about these. These are awesome, awesome cigars. Yeah, I uh, I've been very the Byron's been very quietly. I have a couple more left. I I'm gonna. I know you can order those from the store. I think I'm gonna get a couple of those twenty ones. I just. I really want to smoke that one to it's see. A, and I haven't. It's great. Yeah. I have a nineteen. I do have a Byron nineteen. I gotta smoke. Nice. Yep. Back to you, Will. Um. Okay. I smoked. Um. I just lost my cigar. Um. I smoked a cigar from Macanudo. Um. And this is called the Macanudo Estate Reserve 2015 number nine. Um, it's a very limited, and I, I, I'm going to put the pictures up of this. It's a very limited cigar by Macanudo. And for the past three years, they've come out with this more ultra premium Macanudo offering where um, they're using some of their best tobaccos. Um, and they're putting it in coffin boxes. And so you got to take Macanudo, as you may know it, and put it aside. This is just a cigar that they're commemorating with the Macanudo name, but these are not Macanudo, uh, you know, cafes or anything like that. Um, this is the third year they've done this estate reserve. It uses a Connecticut broadleaf wrapper with a San Andreas binder, which I thought was a very interesting combination. Um, and then it has Nicaraguan, Dominican, and Jamaican filler. Hmm. So Macanudo has Jamaican roots. That's um, right. And that's, yeah. So this they're is, one of the uh, few manufacturers today to actually use, still use uh, Jamaican tobacco. It's very, very little because they don't have the presence in Jamaica like they used to. They move more into the DR. I but think there's a lot of political things uh, in Jamaica as well that make it difficult. I think it does. I think there's a lot to do. I think you're right. I think that's why they left in the first place. Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, it's kind of, I think a little bit, and I'm kind of, kind of, um, I'm not saying assuming, but I'm kind of just connecting dots. I think it's similar to, to what's going on in Cameroon in terms of, yes. uh, just it's low yield. I don't want to say it's the same political situation. Um, but the, they're, they're using, they have their own, um, proprietary, uh, varietal of the Jamaican tobacco called silver tongue. And that's where the banding is, is silver. Um, good cigar. Um, it was first of all, it was a more of a medium strength Macanudo um, with medium with, with a lot of body. I mean, you don't normally get a lot of body where you kind of feel it on the palate with a Macanudo. You're used to more of the subtle flavors with it. Mm -hmm. This one had a lot more body, and I think I think this is where the San Andreas binder was really kind of blending nicely with the with the um, with the Connecticut barley. And you get you're gonna get those dark chocolate and coffee note flavors in there. Um, you get you're gonna get some spice, um, and the spice will probably be a little more prominent in the second half. Um, it never becomes an overpowering spice. Um, I actually have a couple of these from General for you, by the way. I want, I'm kind of curious on your thoughts with this. Um, it's a, it's the only thing I'll say is, I don't. It, it is a higher price cigar. It's it's a sixteen dollar cigar, and the other thing I'll say is I don't know if necessarily I'm getting anything revolutionary from that Jamaican tobacco. Other than it is a pretty good blend, mm -hmm. and I've had the previous estate versions were Connecticut Shades, and I've smoked one of them, but I like this one better. I gave it a box split. They they come in ten count boxes. Mm -hmm. I kind of like I said, it's a good, it's a very good cigar. I, I, the only dis, I might have gone box worthy if there was something I felt I was getting from that Jamaican tobacco that was right new, but I, I didn't really get anything more new other than it was just a good cigar. Yeah, and I, I think sometimes when you smoke a cigar that has tobacco in it that's not used in a lot of other um, cigars, you tend you're to— kind You're of kind of expecting something, yeah. Yeah, you're expecting something different or whatever. And if it does, you know, I don't think that tobaccos from uh, the other countries that aren't used so much are necessarily all that better, right? I mean, it depends on a lot of different factors. Climate, soil, fermentation, the whole nine yards, so. Yep. Uh, I smoked another one from uh, from Dave Garofalo's uh, store. It's called the Spirit of Art. This is the 56S. I believe it's a 6x56 Connecticut Shade uh, cigar. And this cigar was very good. It was very easy to smoke. Um, had that nice Connecticut uh, sweetness and creaminess, which is nice. And a lot of the Connecticut cigars, not a lot, but some of them, you know, fall in that category where you get that bitterness from the Connecticut wrapper. And I did not get that from this cigar. I thought it was very smooth creamy, very flavorful, um, and I gave it a fiver. 
This is another one of those cigars, um, and you smoked from the company, uh, the Cuba Rica company. Oh, is that who makes it? Was that's it? who's ma- that's who's making it. Yeah, okay. and it has like a guy with a beard. I haven't looked yeah. at it, but it's the guy with the beard on it, right? Yeah, I I can't say I was very uh, overly impressed with the the band. It was kind of the band actually looks. And I'm not trying to knock the cigar, but I mean, it does look like an inexpensive cigar yes. because of the band. Yeah, but I've heard good things about this cigar. No, the, but the uh, the tobacco in the blend is really good. And I'm very critical of Connecticut, so I don't know. You kind of—I don't know how you'd weight that in a rating system, but uh, I smoke a lot of Connecticut, so I'm often uh, pretty critical of the Connecticuts. You know, yeah. I, you know, lately I've just, I just—I just want to kind of reemphasize: we have a lot of Connecticut reviews on Stogie Geeks and Cigar Coop, or okay. Connecticut Shade Cigars. I, there's, I've been hearing it lately on different shows, and, and I'm not trying to. You know, there are people out there. And it's not just us who do review Connecticut Shades. I keep hearing that no one reviews Connecticut Shades and no one likes it. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I, I I didn't look at just our side. I started looking at other sites. I don't know where this is coming from, but I'm kind of curious if someone could could, could uh, quantify that for me. Yeah, <coughs> but we do review a lot of them on the show. Absolutely. Yep. <coughs> Back to you, Will. Um, new cigar from La Florida Minicana. I talked about it a little with John Carney on the i know we both talked about it a little with him on the four-year anniversary show and this is a line extension to the 1994 line called the tango Mm. um so this introduced a rothschild um a four and a half by 48 uh line extension into um the uh 1994 line and the thing is about the the tango which um i mean i did the 1994 line which i thought was this is the shortest and the thinnest ring gauge on here um most of the other ones are in the five to seven inch 52 to 58 ring gauge um so they're bigger ring gauge this is a smaller ring gauge and a shorter smoke um that be, i kind of have been the, the 1984 a lot of people really love that cigar um I, I saw very high ratings on it i was i was fiber with it mm-hmm. i didn't think it was a bad cigar I think with this size, this is what I was looking for maybe with the 1994 all along. It had a little more strength and body. And I can't say if that's because of the size or because it maybe a newer, because it was newer. But I can't say it definitely had that. It had that very unique, you want to talk about cinnamon notes, little cayenne pepper in there, uh, a bready type note in there. It's a very, you know, it had, it, it smokes like a 1994 but I think that extra strength and body just kicked it up a little more. Um, and it was, it was a very, very good cigar. Um, it's a $6.80, a $6.80 smoke. Not expensive. Nice. Um, I'm going to take this one up to a box split on this one. I, I, I really enjoyed. This was the best size I've had in 1994 to date. Yeah, and I, I had the regular Robusto size. What is that called? Um, it is a, it's a named after a dance. Um, it is called tango. the conga. The Congo. The tango. The conga is the five by fifty-two. Okay. Yeah, the tango. I, the tango is the four and a half by forty-eight. Then you get into the rumbas and the mambos, which are I got much. You. They're all yeah. the extra dances. Yeah. But it's the conga is the five by fifty-two. Yeah, I'm. I'm really liking that. <clears throat> I liked that robusto. Uh, and I'll be fair. I haven't probably if I've smoked the conga. I, I know I smoke more of the rumba and the mambos, which are the bigger ones. And I, again, I think this is something works better like, in the smaller sizes. Sounds yeah, like. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, I I went back and I reviewed the um, El Way Wednesday in the Churchill size, and I did smoke a lot of the other sizes. I do like the other sizes as well. I find that the Corona in this line smokes differently. And I have to be kind of, I have to be in a different mood to smoke the Corona. The Corona's uh, richer, fuller bodied smoke, um, which I really do like. I would definitely smoke that later in the day. The Churchill for me gets the higher rating because it's more versatile. Um, it's extremely flavorful. It's well balanced. There's a subtle spice. And to me, it's the bell of the ball in the El Wayuense, which Churchill's normally don't get our bell of the ball rating, but in the El Wayuense, this is definitely the bell of the ball. Nick Malillo did a great job with this blend. We had him on the show. I smoked a bunch when he came here. Um, I've since bought, um, I think, every other size and smoked it just about. And uh, I can say that this is, uh, for me right now, the bell of the ball. 
Yeah, I remember that's what Seth told me from Seth Humidor when he smoked. He said, I think Churchill. Doug Santa said the same thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I haven't smoked the Churchill yet, so I got to smoke that. Yep, this is box worthy, in my opinion. That's cool. That's good. Back to you, Will. All right. Um, I smoked the Senorial Maduro Natural Robusto Digno by Jose Blanco's Las Cumbres Tobacco. I'm going to read you the blend, Paul, yeah. and then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you a trivia question. Okay. All right. The blend is a Mexican San Andreas wrapper, a Dominican Piloto Cubano binder, mm-hmm. and a filler of Dominican Piloto Cubano and Dominican Criollo. The question is, every Las Cumbres blend, what tobacco is found in every Las Cumbres blend? Um, what was in the filler again? Dominican Piloto Cubano and Dominican Criollo 98. I'd say Piloto Cubano. Yep. I actually, I guess Jose really likes that that tobacco because it's in the Freya yep. and it's in the Senorial, the Natural, and the Senorial, the Perfecto Limited. It's it's one so, of the most common Dominican tobaccos. Yeah. That was one of my other trivia questions too. It's Olor Dominicano, Piloto Cubano, and San Vicente are the three primary uh, Dominican tobaccos. There are other ones, like you said, They'll take what was Criollo ninety eight, Criollo ninety eight. Yeah, because yeah, Criollo like... ninety eight seed in the road in Dominican making Dominican Criollo ninety eight. Yeah. So there's ta- I mean, there's so many different strains. So there's different strains of tobacco, and then there's the countries or regions that they grow them in, which can make different ones, and then they hybridize from. The- so there's just there's so many different kinds of tobaccos. We couldn't do five shows and cover them all. I mean, yeah. There's just so many, but. Um, Piloto Cubano is one of the, the more popular ones. So yep, I just yep. guessed. That was my guess. Yep, yep. But uh, yeah, I was, I was just kind of, when I was going and looking at the blends, I said, he's using Piloto Cubano again in this. <clears> but <throat> I smoked the 5.5 by 50 uh, Robusto Digno. Um, I'm going to say, so, you know, I maybe I think I've come around on Mexican San Andreas. I think it's safe to say. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think in the last, I think, but I think I like the Mexican stuff coming out of the DR better than the Nicaragua. Um, that's just, I think, my generalization. But now, is that, is that Mexican San Andreas grown in Mexico and then rolled in the Dominican? Yeah. Okay. But I think I'm finding whatever it is, I just, so, I think the Mexican and the, and the old Nicaraguan blends, there's gotcha. been a few I like, but I think it's these Dominican ones. Dominicans Mateo, with the Mexican San Andreas wrapper on it. Yeah. Yeah. I think I'm just really enjoying this. Um, uh, this is, this is a cigar. I had it at the trade show. It was good. But I'm really impressed with this cigar right now. Um, I've been hearing a lot of great things about his Maduro line. Yeah, this cigar is excellent. And it's a powerhouse. Um, this cigar is a full-strength, full-bodied cigar. I, I was surprised how much strength and body this cigar had. Um, and I think the Robusto is the strongest of the sizes mm-hmm. I've had. And I think it works really, really well. Um, it's a, it, the other thing you look at this Maduro, it's a much, and I, I'll put the picture up, it's a much lighter Maduro wrapper it is. De, than most. Um, <clears throat> it's going to have all your classic Maduro. It, it's going to have your chocolate, your earthy notes, your, um, not necessarily anything revolutionary, um, but I didn't get any of that, that sharp bite. Mm-hmm. There is some spice in the second half of this cigar, but it's, the spice was more complimentary, and it, was still, it didn't suffocate the other flavors, which is something I really liked. Um, it's also a very affordable cigar, eight fifty, um, by Jose. Mm-hmm. And I'm gonna have this as a box worthy cigar right now. Very, very good cigar. Nice. You said you you didn't smoke this yet, but you got some, right? <clears throat> I have some uh, of the Freya and um, of uh, Jose's line uh, as well, and uh, I've got like a, a mixing of them. And I'm kind of I'm holding off on some of the reviews on them because I haven't smoked a whole lot of them, and um, I think they had just come into this shop for the event, so I'm kind of letting them rest before I go crazy reviewing them. What I've smoked so far, I do really like, um, but of what I smoked so far, I wanted to to put it down for a, um, a, I'll probably start smoking them next week. I wanted to put them down for a couple of weeks before uh, before I let them back up again to let them rest. Um, yeah, because like I said, they had I they I believe they had just come into the shop. So yeah, I've smoked all four sizes now, um, and I think the Robusto I'm giving a slight edge. The Gordo and the Lonsdale are very close second, 
Um, I think I smoked quarter, the Lonsdale, and and I, I I did like it. I did, um, and everyone's talking the Lonsdale's aside, but I think this Robusto has a little more kick to it, mm-hmm. and I think it was something a little different. So I, but you can't go wrong with any of those three sizes I just mentioned. The, the Toro is not a bad cigar either. I think it's just of the four, I'd probably put it fourth. Right. <clears throat> I smoked a uh, Illusion Fume de Am- Amor Juniperos. You know, I saw those friggin' at Todd's and I forgot to pick it up. Oh, you totally should have, dude. That's the Lancero. This is the Lancero I smoked when we were um, when you were up here. And, yeah. Um, what a great smoking Lancero. I want to say it's a seven by forty. I think it's a forty ring gauge on this one. Yeah. It's a little fatter. It doesn't, you know, it takes it from that thirty-eight and goes up to a forty, which I kind of like in the in that Lancero. Um, it gives you a little, you know, thicker, meatier cigar. Um, it's a solid medium <coughs> medium bodied cigar. With great flavor, and this this blend is really about the that medium bodied and strong flavored uh, cigar, and they're not over the top on nicotine, and uh, I really liked it. <clears throat> you get a ton of smoking time, and I don't think they're too expensive either, right? No, um, no, I think they're about ten bucks. They're not ter- they're not gonna break the bank, right? <clears throat> great cigar. I mean, that's a, I rated this one a box split. This is a, this is a good cigar. Yeah, I mean, I like Fumé de Amor a lot. I'm curious to see. That's the size they introduced at the trade show this year. Yep. Back to you, Will. Uh, my last cigar, I um, and this is one you've talked quite a bit about, um, the Indian Motorcycle Habano Robusto, um, which I got from you. Um, and then I picked up a little more up at Joyles. Nice. And this is... Uh, from Phil Zangi. It's a new brand. I think every, we've talked a lot about it. Um, it's the uh, natural, it's called sometimes, the Habano Ecuador wrapper, a Dominican San Vicente binder, HVA Lajero, Nicaraguan Seco, and again, that Peloto Cubano there. Mm-hmm. Um, and I spoke the 5x50 Robusto, um, which I know you you were very, very high on this cigar. <clears throat> it's the bell of the ball, I think, in the entire Indian motorcycle ultra premium line. Yeah, and I, I'll say, yeah, it, and I was talking to someone who, um, who smoked the Toro. Toro's and up there, too. The Toro's up there. They they just kind of, um, I told them to go smoke the Robusto and because mm-hmm. I thought there, were, there is a difference, but but it's still very good, um, the Toro. You're right. Um, what I like about this cigar is it's, very, it's a very well-balanced cigar. It balances both the sweetness and the spice extremely well on there. Um which I like it. This cigar um, also, I put it as a medium to full. Yeah, I was gonna say, what did you think of the strength? I thought it was medium I, full as well. I it's got a little medium, kick to it. A little kick to it. Um, I think it's a little more kick than the Maduro has. Um, yep. Now I smoked the Maduro on the show last week for the first time. I, I really liked it, uh, but I felt it was the Maduro was a little more dialed back. In fact, I thought the Maduro was more. Most of Phil's stuff's in that medium to full full range. Yeah, yeah. Most of it. Um, and I thought that the the Indian motorcycle um, Maduro was was probably one of Phil's more dialed back cigars. He did a really good job on this cigar, um, and it's very cla- it's a very classic type of smoke too. It's very different than debonair. Yeah, you know, you're not very get the different. Aut- I thought it had a a lot of body and had this like, especially in the first third, it was very creamy and really coated your entire palate. Every one of these robustos I smoked did the same thing. Just the way it get really coated my palate with all kinds of flavors, especially in that in that first third. Yeah, and it's it's, it's one of those cigars you wanna you you'll get more out of it um, as you sit and smoke this one. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I didn't mention the cream when I reviewed it, but there was a smoothness, and yes. I could see what you're saying with that. Yeah, it's something in that first third, man. Like the the smoke is, I don't know if the smoke is really thick, but just the uh, it has this very like coating kind of creaminess on your palate it's awesome yeah yeah i mean it was um i mean i said construction wise and it's an affordable cigar in the debonair line seven bucks you're not talking you know and it, it, it's it's every bit as good as um a lot you know any i put any i put up against any ten dollar cigars in a lot of case i give it a box worthy in this in this case yeah no i, I bought a box of them i this is one i had to have a box of dude yeah, um, I'm not ready to give it the bell of the bowl yet because I have not smoked all four sizes. Um, I have the Churchill, and I don't have the Gordo. I smoked uh, the Gordo 
and the Toro. I have not smoked the Churchill yet. I have the Churchill. Um, I got the Churchill from Joyles. Okay. So, you know, I'll probably at some point go. But I'm kind of curious to see what Phil is going to do with a Churchill. Yeah. Um, You know, he didn't do a Bellicoso in this line. He did very – we talked about this. He did very traditional sizes. It's Robusto, Churchill, Gordo, and Toro. Very traditional, all – traditional Parejo, you know, sizes uh, in this blend. Unlike the Debonair, right, which has that Seguita, um, it has the first degree, which are very kind of different sizes. Yeah, um, Salomon, of course. Salomon, yeah. and the Torpedo. Well, Torpedo is a traditional size, but. But, yeah, he went Parejo, he went all Parejo mm -hmm. and classic Parejo sizes here. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's an affordable cigar that, you know, you got the, the you know, Robusto Toro, Churchill Gordo, there's something for everybody there. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, it, Kruk just joined us in the in the chat room. He was here hey. for our 10-year anniversary. Oh, oh, just he's... in time for me to review the Oro Vivo Armando Sante by Victor Vital. By the uh, way, I'm 40 minutes late, Kruk. I told him that you probably reviewed about 10 o'clock. So. Yeah. yeah. Uh, this is the European edition. And uh, it was gifted to me by Kruk. This is an amazing cigar. Great medium-bodied smoke. <laughs> a touch of spice, some sweetness. It's just got a whole lot of things going on. It's one of those easy cigars to smoke. They're just full of flavor. Um, but, you know, I like some of the other cigars I reviewed tonight, too. This one had some different components, such as, you know, like that little bit of spice that really helped balance this cigar out and make me like it even more. Um, and for that, I gave it a box worthy. I can, I can see. I think, correct, you said bought a box of these. I can see why. Well, like six boxes on. He told me. Yeah. He uh, he's he may have more. He may have more. This cigar you can't get anymore. Really? You can't. Get, I mean, it went to Europe, and there was some limited release here. And you know, Kruk probably knows. Honestly, he he really knows this cigar. In fact, when I was looking at what you wrote, I I actually had to correct the size. Um, because because Kruk told me the exact size, and then uh, I, the name I even had the name wrong. It was I I because I it looks like a Corona. It's called the Cologne. Yep. Um, he gave. I smoked that on the show with Victor last week, and and I had not smoked the cologne before, and I I I think in that Oro Vivo blend, if if Victor could somehow come back with that blend in those sizes, uh, it's Absolutely. a great cigar. Great, and again, you talk about a, it's not a gimmicky cigar because Armand no. Desante's name on. It's a very good cigar. Absolutely, yeah. Nicaraguan Puro. I don't think he disclosed the blend, so yeah, it, it's a Nicaraguan Puro. Yeah, yep. that's all we know. Um, I also smoked a Saga blend number seven in the Robusto size. Now, uh, Stuggy listeners know that I much prefer uh, the Perfecto size in the yeah. Saga blend number seven. We talked a lot about that cigar, but I smoked the uh, Robusto. And I, I like this blend a lot. It's smooth, solid, medium, full of body and flavor. Um, you have to really smoke this one slow. Pay attention yeah. to the flavors because there's a lot going on. And you'll see when I get to the blend, um, this blend is going to age well. Um, now, I did go back and watch our interview because I believe that uh, Jean-Michel disclosed a lot more about the blend than I think he may have ever disclosed before, Will. When I was researching this online, there was a lot of interesting things I found about the blend. And I went back and I watched the interview. Um, so this is a, a Brazilian Habano Cubra wrapper. Right. Brazilian Habano Cubra. Right. The binder is a uh, Dominican Habano. And he mentions in the, in the interview, it's from Lido's Farms. That's what he yeah, says. Yeah, in fact, yeah, which was something I know that they have, the Reyes family has farms as well. Okay. But did, yeah, did he say Lido or did he say Leo? Maybe it's Leo is what he said. Leo Re He may have meant Leo Reyes. Uh, okay. Who's there, okay. Yeah, who's I thought called. he said, yeah, you're right. He probably said Leo and not, not Lito. Yeah, I that was kind of weird. So Leo, yeah, because they they do a lot of growing the Reyes. Uh, who, so you this know, who, is from the, uh, the Reyes family, Habano Dominicano, in yeah. the binder, um, and then the filler has uh, Dominican Habano, and then he said Seiko primings from Jalapa, Nicaraguan, in uh, Yamastron in Honduras. Yeah, I mean Maybe that's what he said. So, yeah, I, I think, think he said was... the primings from those filler tobaccos, which he had, I don't think he'd ever disclosed before. No, I think all we knew was it was Central American beforehand and yes. Dominican. 
Um, yeah, and he said, you know, it's got Brazilian, Dominican, Nicaraguan, and Honduran tobacco. So it's a four-country blend is what he was yes. saying on the show. Yeah, so. as opposed to the uh, Saga Golden Age, which is a Puro, a Dominican Puro. Right. So I'm giving this one a box split. I thought this in the Robusto size was really good, and I, I want to have this in my humidor to, to kind of switch back and forth between the Perfecto and the Robusto. Um. And then probably my – this was, in fact, my smoke of the week. Um, this is the Ava Classic Covers 2015, also known as Volume 1. I can't wait to hear what you're going to say about this cigar. So I, I... this is uh, classic Avo. It's got those awesome herbal notes um, that are just presented so well in the Avo blends. However, this one's slightly amped up in body and in flavor. Yes. I just got this, like – it was like classic Avo, but like it was like epic, off the charts flavor and body. Like there was just so much yeah. more to this in in an Avo cigar. Um, it's one of my most favorite smokes recently. I want more. It was just an awesome, awesome smoke. I actually have this as one of my in my top twenty right now, and. Everyone's talking about Classic 2, which I think is a great cigar oh, that, volume, That was too. great, too. I like this that, one way better, though. I mean, I, not, I shouldn't say way, uh, This see, one fits my palate a lot better. If you're an Avo yes. fan like you are, this one's going to fit. Now, Classic <sighs> 2 is going to have a richness to it yes. that you, that's going to be a little different. It's a deeper, richer smoke. Yeah. yeah. It's an excellent cigar, but I think I'm still back. Like I said, this the one was more of Classic Avo, and the 2 yes. was kind of a little more of a change of pace. I think it's good. I think, they, I think it's good they did that, too. Yes, I, no, I agree. Um, so it's an Ecuadorian 702 wrapper, uh, Mexican San Andreas binder, uh, and the filler is uh, Ometepe Lajero, of course, from yep. Nicaragua, uh, Dominican Piloto Lajero, Dominican San Vicente Lajero, Dominican hybrid Corojo slash Olor Lajero. So I'm, from reading that correctly, they did a hybrid of Dominican Corojo and Olor Dominicano of yeah. the Lajero priming. Right, and there's a lot of Lajero in that blend, too. Yeah, and then uh, Dominican Criollo uh, of the Lajero priming. Right. I love it when they give us all the different components. Davidoff's, I mean, Davidoff's when, really when they good give the, about that. I mean, not just the, the country, the type of plant, and the priming. That's just so cool. We love that here at the Stogie Geeks. Yeah, you know, there's, you know, Caldwell's another company. Jose does a good job at that, too. Mm -hmm. Um, I think certain, you know, like Davidoff can do that. Yeah. Because a lot of that stuff's proprietary. No one's gonna, right. No one's gonna be touching that. I stuff, had never but. heard of a Dominican hybrid Corojo and Olor Lajero. I've seen Olor hybrid as a hybrid. I can't remember if I've seen it with that. But Olor, they do. They are doing. A, Davidoff's doing a lot with hybrid seeding. Yeah. Yeah, Hanky's doing a lot with that. Yeah, Hanky's really. He's quoted one of the articles on Corojo. So. Yeah, uh, yeah. I think he's. Uh, we got to get him on the show and talk about that because that's a really geeky topic that uh, yeah. we need to explore. With some, I like agree. I, I, we were talking about that. I totally agree. Yeah. We will get Hanky. We're gonna work on that. <clears throat> um, this cigar is a fight, Chuck Norris. I, I agree. That's what I had it as. Yep. Awesome. But if you, yeah, I, I totally agree with you. I also, I just like the way. I mean, the only issue I had with the, the classic two, and I love the classic two. It had a little more of a looser draw for whatever reason. This one, I just like the draw on this one a lot better too. Mm hmm That's it. I'm done. One more question on that. Would you say that's the top Avo release you've had this year? <sighs> yeah, I would say so. I'm gonna Me go too. back and smoke it again. Me too. Um it I was have very to say good. that the uh the Avo uh Nicaragua, what is that one called? Uh I'm blanking on it now. That sixty ring that we smoked. The special the Toro. The special Toro. The special Toro. The Synchro. It, the Synchro Avo special Synchro, Toro. thank you. Avo Synchro. Uh, in the uh, special Toro size, that was really good too. Wasn't it funny how Dave said when we talked to him and he was liking it, and he he went to the sixty as well. Yeah, yeah, I, I thought, thought that was. We didn't even we didn't even tee him up on that. Yeah, I, it's interesting how we validate some of each other's findings like that. Yeah, so. it is. It is very good when you do that. Yeah, so you know, you yes. on the moon. Yeah. Um, do we have a prize pack to give away? Do we have a one sixty three pack? I don't know if there's a one. I don't know if I got as far as 163 with the label and the prize packs. Do we create a prize pack? That's what I'm saying. I don't know if I created one for this show. 
If not, maybe we can bring out one of those Partagas, uh, Partagas boxes. We could give away a Partagas box. It says 162, and we didn't do this one, giveaway no, for 162. No, so this no, we did, one... we, no, we did the 162. No, we didn't do this one. This is Intemperance, 5 Intemperance. But didn't we do a 162 last week, too? We did yeah, one. We, we gave away a lot of stuff last week, but none of it was labeled 162. Okay. I'm going to trust you on it. Oh, did we do an episode 162 before we did the four-year? Or was four-year 162? Four-year was 162. Oh, okay. Four, if four-year was 162, 164. No, we'll do this. We'll do this on 164. We, we haven't given these away yet. Is what okay. I'm saying, Well. So okay. this is a five-pack on the uh, Intemperate uh, BA Revenge? Revenge. The box press. Yes. BA Revenge, did I say that right? The, B A, the Intemperance BA21 Revenge. Revenge. Right? Did we get that right? This is the exclusive to Mr. Jason on a Smoke Shop. Yes. We should know yes. this. We should know yes. this. Yes. Okay. So this is for the five-pack. When I asked Will the questions about Corojo, what was Will's score? Great question. What percentage of Will score on the Corojo test? So I can't ask any of the answers, uh, the questions on the Corojo test because we gave them out on the show. <laughs> What's Coop drinking? Oh, he's going to laugh at Fresca. Fresca. <laughs> Fresca. Fresca. <sighs> oh, we've got to thank Crook, man, again. He came up, uh, he came down, actually, from New Hampshire and... Uh, he brought us some great cigars as well. We should have been loading him up. So this thank you, bro. And yeah. Cool. Well, that does it for this edition of the Stogie Geek Show. Thanks, everyone, for watching. And we'll see everyone next week. Take care.